Good job. That's thumbs up, buddy. Yeah. Um, give a thumbs up to Brad Eppling, his crew, or his work for uh, resurfacing all of the tables out of the golf course. And uh, they look nice, and they're well serviced, and they look beautiful and, and well received by everyone there. So thumbs up to him. Um, yeah, thumbs up to Joe. I really like the new form that you're sending out, tracking the budget. That is a very nice tool to have. So I do appreciate you. I believe you were the one that incorporated it, and I do find it very handy. So thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks. I agree. Pass. Bye, Okay. And thumbs up to Caitlin Clark for being drafted number one in the NBA. <laughs> NBA and Continuing to represent the state of Iowa very well in our next meeting. We'll move on to consent items. Consent items. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a request is made prior to the time for council votes on the motion. We have five today. Approval of April 2, 2024 special and regular meeting minutes. List of bills for period ending 4-12-24. Monthly financial statement for March 2024. Renewal of the liquor license by Bockers. And a request to close the streets for ice cream days. Uh, just to comment on the ice cream days one. Just, just to note that we don't have the authority to close private stuff. So if you look at these, a couple of these maps, it shows... Uh, mm -hmm. I think a private parking lot uh, next to fairway there mm -hmm. being closed off. Uh, we don't give authority to that. That's between that's between them. So are we're just doing it. Are they any different than we've done in the past? Are, huh? they, are, they, What's that? are they any different and the, the, the proposals that they're asking for? Uh, no, I believe it's the same as last year. No. The only I remember only Jason mentioning that last year too. Yeah. So. <laughs> well the the only difference and it doesn't affect the street closures, which is fairways entrances, since they're all now no entrance off of Plymouth Street. So I'm assuming that someone is, I think the, uh, the first year that we did that, they were not particularly pleased because I think we had a lot of people parking in that. I'm looking at you, Lori, but I think that's kind of the way that went. It might have been before Since you. then, we've been very proactive in making sure that that's, there's signs. Okay, and fairway is yeah, all okay with it. Parking lot, we usually contact them to see if we can use their car. So. Yeah. But Fairway is okay with it. Yeah. Uh, as far okay. as I know, I can check with Ms. Kathy, but I'm, I'm pretty sure she's already done it. I would expect so, but just, just, mm -hmm. just checking. Yeah. Thank you. And it looks like they'd still use two of the three on the west there. Yeah, I think all of the, the, the entrances are, are fine, other than it just eliminates a couple of avenues to get to the entrances. And I've seen a couple of people that. <laughs> on Plymouth Street are driving across the tracks and <laughs> over the, st the sidewalk to get into the parking uh, lot. So anyway, it's I'd just like to request that they use a newer map next time because it <laughs> threw me off when I saw the PD building and I'm like, where is this at? <laughs> so I guess so. I, they probably recycle it, but maybe take a new one. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. yeah. uh, my only question is uh, renewal of liquor license. Everybody's in good standing, correct, Chief? Yeah. That's all I care about. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? And I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve consent items one through five. Motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Move on to action items. Action uh, item one. Oops. Hold on. Comment. Oops. Can we move, uh, unless they're going to go pretty quick. We got somebody on the phone for four and somebody in the audience for three. Take them out of order. If you want, unless the number one and two are going to go pretty quick. It's up to you. I think they'll go pretty <coughs> think yeah. pretty, pretty stand, One and two are standard. Everybody what looks at me done. when they ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> With good reason. <laughs> I think they'll go fairly quick. Uh, yeah. 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 Brief discussion, Mark, exactly. for three or no? It just depends on if there's questions. I'd like to get Steve on the road if it's going. No, I got him beforehand. Yeah. So yeah. I'll really we're going to maintain the order. All right. Number one, assistance request 
the Luxury Real Estate LLC. <coughs> the Luxury Real Estate LLC is proposing to construct an apartment building in the west part of the Mars near the airport. They are proposing to construct 12 apartment units. The Luxury Real Estate LLC is pursuing financial assistance for a portion of the cost of this project. As such, are requesting approval from the City of Lamar's to submit an application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority for funding through the Workforce Tax Credit Program. The administration is recommending the city fulfill the local maps through our Urban Revitalization Plan tax exemption. The plan allows for 100% exemption of taxes on increased assessed value for the first seven years on a multi-family residency. The financial is impact is the estimated total tax exemption amount is approximately $129,131 over the seven year period. Again, similar to what we've done in the past, exactly what we've done. Yeah. Motion to adapt resolution number 2421. 20. 20. Approving the Workforce Housing Tax Credit Program application to Iowa Economic Development Authority for the construction of multifamily housing by Deluxury Real Estate LLC. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. May I have a roll call, please? Good child. Yes. Wick. Yes. Sturgeon. Yes. Pick. Yes. Bruns. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Moving on to action item two assistant, assistance request. For 1410 Holton Drive LLC. 1410 Holton Drive LLC is proposing to construct apartment buildings in the west part of the Mars near the airport. They are proposing to construct 24 apartment units. 1410 Holton Drive LLC is pursuing financial assistance for a portion of the cost of this project. As such, are requesting approval from the City of Mars to submit an application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority for funding through the Workforce Tax Credit Program. <coughs> the administration is recommending the city fulfill the local match through our Urban Revitalization Plan exec tax exemption. The plan allows for 100% exemption taxes on increased assessed value for the first seven years on multi-family residences. The estimated total tax exemption amount is approximately $241,610 over the seven year period. Questions? Then I would entertain a motion. Motion to adopt resolution number 2421, approving the Workforce Housing Tax Credit Program application to Iowa Economic Development Authority for the construction of multifamily housing by 1410 Holton Drive, LLC. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. May I have a roll call please? Bruns. Yes. Good child. Yes. Yeah. Wick. Yes. Pick. Yes. Sturgeon. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. We want to do it pretty quick. What's that? <laughs> I didn't. Item three. EPA, EPA Brownfield Program Assessment Grant Application. H.R. Green Incorporated will prepare a $500,000 EPA Brownfield community-wide assessment grant on behalf of the City of Omars during the federal fiscal year 2025 funding cycle. If awarded, the funds allow the community to identify, prioritize, assess, and conduct cleanup planning <coughs> on the Brownfield properties as identified by city staff and an appointed advisory committee. Brownfields are property where expansion, redevelopment, or reuse may be complicated by the presence or potential presence of a hazardous substance, pollutant, or contaminant. Primary grant activities include completion of phase one and phase two environmental site assessments. These studies help identify and quantify potential contamin contaminant impact on brownfield properties. The information assists property owners and developers in having a better understanding of what steps must be taken, if any, before a property can be redeveloped. The grant also has funds intended to help advance the redevelopment of priority brownfield sites following investigation. Eligible planning activities include reuse visioning plans, market studies, infrastructure evaluations, review of cleanup alternatives, land use assessments, creation of area-wide plans, 
site, reuse vision, revitalization plans, etc. <coughs> Grant application are expected to be due in November of 2024. Award notices will be made in the spring of 2025. The administration recommends approving the professional services agreement with HR Green to prepare the fiscal year 2025 U.S. EPA Brownfield Program Assessment Grant application. The professional service agreement with a fee not to exceed $15,000 is the financial impact. Hi, Mark. Hey. Hi. So what brought this up was Erdmanville. Uh, when we purchased Erdmanville, uh, the developer that is going to redevelop that, uh, you know, we encountered things like asbestos. And because of what used to be there, there was a service station on one of the corners. Just want to make sure the uh, property uh, was clean before they started redevelopment. So we had to do a phase one environmental. We had to do asbestos inspections and abatement. And so this would have been helpful if that would have been available at that time. And we've been working with HR Green to do the uh, phase one and phase two environmentals uh, for us in Erdmanville. And that's when HR Green suggested, are there other properties in the community? We've done this before and they cited Sioux City for an example, they've done this very thing. And if you can identify those properties in the community, uh, it could be helpful to those property owners if they would ever wanna redevelop. And so an example would be, uh, you know, uh, Mike Wells purchased what used to be, I call it the old bomb guards. Uh, next to it used to be Fetters Marine and RV. And next to that, I call it the old Schuster trucking, but where Campbell's, where Campbell's was at. And so if we are to redevelop that, because of what used to be there, any of your larger uh, national retailers or groups, developers, would want to know that the site's clean. So we could use this to do the homework now. And then when we offer that property for sale, then that developer can make a decision much quicker rather than waiting till after the fact. And then the expense for all that, and it's not free to do all this stuff, is paid for through the grant. And so what we did is uh, through and with LBIC, we asked the LBIC board, are there other properties amongst in the community that might qualify? And uh, we've been identifying different properties around town, and we've identified a dozen properties that could you know, be redeveloped at some point in time, and we can go to those owners and offer to do this for them. Uh, and so the downside for an owner, if their ground's contaminated, you know, the, then they know about it. The upside is if they ever want to redevelop the property, uh, it can be addressed. Uh, and or we prove that the, the site is clean. My history is there's not a lot of severely contaminated sites in a community. We, we had one in Lamar's, it was an EPA site, but that did get redeveloped. But uh, you know, we would know those things and what needs to happen ahead of time. So that's the purpose for this. Uh, this is a first for me. I've never worked with the EPA in this program. I did bring Steve from HR Green. Steve and I have been having these conversations about this opportunity for the last several months. And it's just an opportunity for Lamar's to do something to prepare for the future, especially in light of our community development plan. So I don't know, Steve, is that a fair description? Yeah, very accurate. And I brought Steve here today in case you guys would have specific questions about the grant itself, but I, I think it's pretty explanatory what we'd use it for. I think it's great. Can can government use it as well as private? Yes. And yes. is it is it um, also in abatement and or just say for instance, um, if we have a site and there's tanks that's discovered underneath right. some contaminated soil. Does this grant help? With no. no. So this can be utilized by both the city and private property owners, but it's a completely voluntary program, meaning if, if somebody wants to opt in to participate, they're going to have to sign an access agreement. So the city of Lamar's is not going to go after any private property owner and say, hey, we're going to investigate your site. Right. But no, this does not offer cleanup funds. However, this is the first step in that process to be eligible for those funds. Okay. So through whether it's through the DNR or through the EPA, there are cleanup funds available. Um, I will say that there are lots of times when people think of cleanup, it's you know over excavation of 
soils. There's so many things that you can do um, based on what the contaminant is and what the future use is. You can site a parking lot to cap it. You can put a deed restriction on where there's no um, residential uses. You can do, you can prohibit private drinking water wells. So cleanup isn't always literally the physical cleanup of the property. And this looks at things um, in soil, groundwater, building materials, um, as well as indoor air. So, you know, everybody knows the classic brownfield sites where there's 55 gallon drums sitting outside and a bunch of weeds. It can also be an upper level of a downtown building where they want to convert it to residential housing. They've got lead based paint and asbestos that we can survey and quantify. Right. So again, we don't bait it, but we can tell you if it's there, how much, where it's at. And then you're eligible for future and, funds. And these grants annual? Yes. Okay. Yes, this program started in 1999. So it's not one and done? No. Okay. And this is a four year project. A four-year project period. How competitive is the grant process? It is competitive. Um, we have been doing these since since the inception of the program. Um, we are perfect six for six since FY19. So I feel like HR Green's got a really good handle on how to do these. Um, the city has set itself up well with, um, like Mark said, through the DNR. The EPA wants to see some level investment, and with you guys applying for um, 128A dollars through the DNR that helped do that phase one and phase two at Erdmanville and you guys have got a development agreement underway so the EPA knows that this is not going to just be a bunch of reports that sits on a desk somewhere you guys this, this is the linchpin to get you guys to move something forward and and if we can demonstrate you guys already know how to use funds like this on a much smaller scale like the DNR office the EPA is going to love this okay. <laughs> Anything else? Can they offer award a smaller amount or? They can, and that's something Mark and I need to talk about. Uh, so as part of this um, contract, we're gonna develop a list of so many sites and see um, you know, what the actual need is. So you can apply up to 500, but yeah, you can do 300, that makes more sense. For instance, in Oskaloosa, we just got the money last year, we only did 350. So you know, City of Lamar's and Chicago, Illinois could be both be applying for a half a million. So does it make sense? I'm not sure that the need is there for a full half a million dollar grant, but we'll make sure that we scale it appropriately for what you guys want to do. Uh, Mark, this may be germane to this or not, but I would encourage us to focus on properties that we have right now, not not the ones we're looking at. I'm not that they can't be looked at, but. We have a couple that come to mind. Yes, that I, I agree. We're going to want some help on. There's one in particular. One in particular <laughs> that I'm thinking of. Yeah. So. Uh, wink, wink, nod, 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 yes, nod. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Correct. Money Python. Yeah. Motion approving the professional services agreement with HR Green Inc. for the EPA Brownfields Program Assessment Grant application with total fees not to exceed 15000 Motion, do I have a second? Second. Uh, motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Say aye. Those opposed the same. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Airport taxiway to new hangars, item four. Bolton and Mank have prepared plans and specifications for a taxiway to new hangars project. There is one private party and a possible second that is prepared to begin building hangars as soon as possible. The proposed schedule, April 16, 2024, kept council set public hearing. April 7, 2024, the public hearing. April 15, 2024, bid due at 11 a.m. May 21st, 2024, award the contracts. And April, uh, September 24th through May 25th, the construction. <coughs> the administration and the airport advisory committee recommend council proceed with the project. Financial impact, see the attached engineer's estimate and funding summary. <coughs> okay, so we've got uh, Joe Rohnfeldt with Bolton and Mink on the phone. Uh, I wanted him here because he could probably better explain uh, all the alternates that are involved in, in different ways it could be funded. So, do you want to go into that, Joe, a little bit? Sure. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> all right. So, um, what you have before you is in the plan of spec is a base bid, which includes um, 
if I remember right from your packet, I'm trying to do this on my phone, but um, it, it is the green area that goes from the apron and turns and goes around towards these potential hangers. Um, that is eligible for FAA funding and part of the project. Um, that at least gets us to the first hangar. Um, you also have the um, option of doing alternate A and alternate B, which is related to an extension of the baby for a second hangar. Um, that is also eligible for FAA funding. However, to be cognizant of your other future projects at the airport, um, we had talked about, and with the commission, the potential for applying for a state grant this spring. Um, and that would be coming to a future council meeting in May. But what would be accomplished and what's shown in your funding summary is um, extending the pavement further to the south, I mean to the east, sorry, um, as part of alternate bid A, and then doing the site improvements um, as part of alternate C and D as part of a state grant application. And the reason we would do that is to, tr to get as much as we could under the state grant application to help you guys, because the state will pay for uh, what you want to call site improvements, so grading and other things related to the hangars to get them ready for development, and that could include utilities. And so there was a funding summary that was provided, and I see it's part of your packet there, that kind of describes how, um, you know, going into the bid, um, how we intend to fund the project and the option available for you guys to do so. Yeah, that's the last page. The easy one to read? Yeah. Okay. The bifocals. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so there's both federal funding and state funding, and it's broken down into uh, a way to try to take the best advantage of the available funds. That's right. why it's this way. So. Right. Any questions about it? Um, yes, maybe. Um, I was going to maybe visit some of these as we went through, because I knew this was one. Joe, can you help me out um, on the treasurer's report? All right, so we're showing a, showing a definite in air, a deficit in airport improvements. So how does that